This video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. All right, guys, I'm back with Dr. Todd Lee again. I uh, haven't had him on in a bit. I was sick with the flu and then pneumonia, and I haven't been uploading a lot of videos lately. I'm trying to get back into my routine now. But we got Dr. Todd back. What's up, Todd? What's up, Paul? How you doing? It's been a busy week in bodybuilding, man. There's there's some shit to talk about. <laughs> oh, man. I almost hate speaking his name into existence, but we, we got to talk about the liver king a little bit. And then uh, this Washington we got Post. We to talk about. <laughs> then we, both, we both ran stories on the liver king thing. We both did stories about the Washington Post. And it's almost like I didn't realize this, but they're doing a series of articles building up to release the final episode at the Olympia, which is supposed to target the three generations of tyranny is how they call it. So they're obviously, this is all not just a hit piece. It's a hit campaign that starts with, what do you call it? Uh, taking advantage of women. And then it goes into death. Then it goes into endorsing steroids that are toxic for you. And it's going to end with three generations of Mannions controlling this evil empire, like it's Bluefeld and the specter. And that they're basically just destroying the lives of everyone who wishes to participate in the IFBB by manipulating them through their insecurities and their desire to be loved. And that's their whole agenda. That's their narrative they're pushing. Yeah, I heard I was, somebody was telling me that they're supposedly making a documentary, too. I don't know if that's true, but I heard that. Through the <laughs> All it's going to do is make more people want to be bodybuilders because more people are going to be aware of it. Yeah, it, it's so weird, man. It was just uh, like like reading through the article. Just there was so much shit in there. It just wasn't true. Just yeah, exactly. So the thing that was the hit thing for me was they're going through all these dead people, right? And they're talking about this person died and this person died and this person died, and then they get to Luke Sandow, who committed suicide. Yeah, and then it's like. They didn't even mention that he committed suicide. They all made it out to be that it was due to his left ventricular hypertrophy, which was an athlete's heart, which you take anyone in the WNBA, the NBA, the NHL, the NFL, anyone in the world, and he's they're going to have a dilated left ventricle. Yeah, and I thought it was kind of disingenuous, too. I noticed they put, uh, I think there was an email in there from Chris Aceto to him, like where Luke was complaining about being tired or something on prep, and Chris just said that this is the game we play or something like that. It wasn't even anything, like, it was, like, anything crazy. Uh, and, like, they, like, linked that with, like, they insinuated that Chris was telling him to keep pushing, and then somehow he died as a result of that. It, it was just... It, it, was, it fit their narrative. It was just a bunch of horse shit. It's like... It was very they disingenuous. Pick, they pick, they cherry-pick, like, a girl who died in 2013, and then a bunch of people working under Shelby Starnes that died from diuretic overdose in the past year. Then they mixed in somebody who died who I think was related to a certain vaccine that was pre Olympia last year, and then they mentioned two people that died of depression, basically, that they just were so depressed and so miserable, they just let themselves go. And then one suicide. And it's like, your, your span is nine years. You're going from 2013 to 2022, and you've got 10 deaths. Like, that's not a large list of deaths for a sport that has a million people over the span of 10 years. It's kind of like with their whole thing of, uh, I mean, I've got my own issues with the first article about the JM Mannion, the photographer and the soft corn website thing, but the, we don't even need to address that. There's enough material with their legitimate complaint, which is there's death to just have a whole podcast just about that. To just, dismantling that one article 
Yeah, I mean, the first article was was bad enough, and then the second one. I saw the second one yesterday. My my girlfriend was like, "Have you seen this?" Well, it's the like, fourth. I'm... It's the fourth article, right? It's oh, the it? there is a part one which was about the women in JM. Oh uh, yeah, and yeah. There's yeah. Part two, which was his father Jim Mannion's response. Then there's part three. Um, the the part three was the deaths, and part four was all about the steroid use. Yeah, it was the things that uh, what is it? What bodybuilders do to their bodies and brains, and they they brought they brought up the whole fucking roid rage thing again. I mean, I thought I thought that that myth was dispelled many years ago. It was just insane. It's just which it's, what's ironic is they didn't have any data. They basically no. had a conjecture that we assume it has something to do with the amygdala because that has to do with um, feelings, and then they go on to explain that. It's a much more broader effect that the neurohormones have amplification on emotions. So, and that it's a small subset of individuals who experience roid rage. Therefore, what they all they did in trying to create a problem is they dispelled the problem, saying out of the general population, a small percentage have anger issues. If you take the same population and put them on steroids, they're more emotional. So those with anger issues will have amplified anger issues. Uh, my no mood, is... Anecdotally, man, my mood is better. It's when I come off, I don't feel great. I don't really notice. I think that I notice if I'm hungry, then I'm going to be in a bad <laughs> mood. Whether I'm going to, if I'm on steroids or not, I'm not going to like being on a contest prep diet. Yeah, I mean, food, food is what makes me grumpy. <laughs> if I'm hungry. I mean, yeah, yeah, if, I, if I'm starving, I get hungry, but I, or, I mean, I get grumpy. But generally, I'm a pretty chill, late, anybody knows me, I'm, I'm a pretty chill, laid-back guy. It takes a lot to get me worked up. I've never had any <laughs> feelings of, like, losing my shit or anything. I, it's just completely, completely made, made up. I, I was laughing. There was one part in here where they were talking about, it, yeah, here, here it is, uh, uh, the overdoing of, uh, let's see, they said they over, they are overdoing steroids, overdoing growth hormones in oils or whatever else. Oils refers to an oil-based concoction that can be injected into the muscles, often the calves and biceps and shoulders to make them temporarily look bigger. I'm assuming they're talking about synthol, but I'm like, right. are, are, there, are there that many guys that actually even use synthol? No, it's just sensational shit. You got to remember that that guy was kicked out of the IFBB. He had a falling out with the Mannions. So he's got a bone to pick with yeah. the IFBB and the Mannions. So he wants to make um, everything look bad. I think it's Jim Raquel is the one who made that call. Yeah, Jim Raquel. Yeah, yeah. so was... he's got a big problem with the Mannions, and therefore he's got a, a bone to pick with the Mannions. So this is an opportunity for him to shit all over them. Yeah, I mean, I don't know anything about the Mannions. I don't know about their business practices or anything. I I, I don't feel qualified to speak on them. I, you know, I'm not a member of the IFBB, but it, it's it's uh, it's insane to me. It's, I've never heard. I mean, I've never heard anybody say anything bad. I've been in the community for a long time, so I've gotten along with both JM and Jim when I've talked to them in the past. I've had a brief interaction with Tyler when I did Texas and I've never had any problems at all. I'm really excited about what Tyler is going to do with the IFBB standardizing stuff so that we can pay online for our cards every year, rather than doing a wire transfer that we can upload our music to a database rather than having to bring a CD or a thumb drive that may or may not work to the show. Like he's going to modernize a lot of the technology and he's cause he's the head judge of every show now pretty much across the world, he is going to standardize judging criteria so that you don't have to worry about who's going to be judged. It's, you just have to meet the Tyler Mannion's qualifications. And this is why it's frustrating me that he hasn't done anything wrong and he's going to get dragged through the mud with this fifth article that's about the Mannion's control over the IFBB. So if he's coming in as a reformationist, he's going to be held accountable for the behavior, supposed behavior, alleged behavior of his father, or supposed alleged controlling behavior of his grandfather, which is nonsense. I mean, I, I've heard the stories of of women being manipulated, and I, I know some coaches that have done some unethical stuff with women. And I don't want to name names, but there, there certainly has been some issues there that could be improved. Uh, that That is for sure. 
I'm not going to speak to the veracity of these claims, but even the article itself didn't really con- paint a convincing picture that the IFBB was involved in what had happened. It sounded like there was a judge who didn't actually have the power to make the changes, just misled girls into thinking that sleeping with him would result in them winning, and it didn't. And the ones that complained didn't win. They were complaining they didn't win, not that the, supposedly oh, there's, a, in theory, a number that had slept with them and won that didn't complain because they got what they wanted. And then there was this completely different issue where JM, the photographer, is taking pictures of girls and says, you know, if I take nude pictures of you and put them on my separate website, then I will give you 50% of the profit. I don't see what that business transaction has anything to do with them competing in the IFBB or it having any impact on their performance. Now, the I guess some of these girls claimed they felt like it was implied that their career would be benefited if they did these pictures. But that doesn't, it's not the same thing as full extortion where you say, you let me take nude pictures of you and you will win. If you don't let me take nude pictures of you, you will lose. And then unless they've got documents proving that in writing, then it's not evidence. And you can't hold people accountable for something they're alleged of on someone's word. That you're guilt, you're innocent till proven guilty. And there needs to be evidence and there needs to be a trial. And then this man needs to be convicted of a crime. And then the organization might be held responsible for his behavior. But to allege something that this separate guy who's in a corollary business that's not part of this actual parent organization condemns the entire organization due to blood ties to the individuals at the top of that organization, although it creates a great picture and it makes for a good story in an article in a newspaper, but it has nothing to do with real life. Yeah, I mean, I've never, I've, I've never heard anything bad from. I mean, I know a lot of people that compete in the IFBB, and I've never heard anything bad from people about it. it you would think, you know, those of us that are in the community would 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 hear hear this stuff. I don't. I mean, I've heard about some shitheads here here and there, but they're isolated individuals. It's not the organization that I I hear bad things about. And definitely, if somebody is taking advantage of their power and, and abusing things, if they are truly guilty of it, they they sh- they shouldn't be allowed in the organization anymore. So I guess it comes down to this. It's like, if you feel that the IFBB is evil because it extorts women, then don't join. If, on the other hand, you you know, if you don't, and otherwise it has nothing to do with you. It's like, if you don't want to engage in sex acts to win, then don't. Just show up, compete, and you either win or you lose. That it's not like you're the world's best of something and they're going to give you second or third or fourth because someone who looks terrible slept with someone that's just never going to happen and so if there's an unscrupulous individual with a badge who says do what i want you to do and this will benefit you and then it doesn't pan out it means he's a scumbag scammer who used the, his authority as a way of tricking the woman and he should be legally charged for what he did. But that doesn't mean the girl who won must have done the same. Right. You can't assume that every girl that ever won an Olympia fucked her way to the top just because girls who tried failed. Not only that, just how much power does one judge even have anyway? They have a panel of judge. Right. right. Okay. My experience as a judge in Michigan is that out of 12 or 15 judges, maybe more, you'll get a call Tuesday saying that you're going to be, you're selected from the panel to be on the panel on Saturday. That would mean out of, let's say there's 15 judges, there's usually more. If a particular girl wanted to win, she would have to sleep with 15 to 40 people so that the odds are in her favor that the whole panel would be with people that she slept with. And then somehow she has leverage over these people because she slept with them. It doesn't make any sense, but it's often something you hear that if a girl wins, the girl who loses says, well, that's just because she slept with the judges. 
Yeah, I mean, they, I mean, undeniably, I mean, I just think about it. They're they're going to be shitheads in any area, and they 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 should they should, you know, shouldn't be allowed in if they're truly doing this stuff. But I I look, I've been around this shit for a while. I've never once run across this in in my experience. But in thirteen years of coaching girls, I've only had third hand information that the girls that there was ever a single case of that happening. In 13 years. I mean, most of the shows I go to recently, it seems like they have the female and male competitors separated and the judges in the in the female division are almost all women. That's what I've seen recently. Usually it's Sandy at the national levels and at the pro shows and the Olympia that chooses the female divisions anyway. That they've already fixed this by having one woman who's in charge of who wins the women divisions. This completely obviates the situation where the show could be corrupted. Right. Like, obviously, not all the people on the panel are women. One of them could be men. But in the pro ranks, as in with most of the amateur shows, the top, the top and the bottom are dropped. Yeah. So out of five judges, if the, everyone puts this, like, contestant eight as second – and one person has them as one, and one person has them as five, the one and the five are dropped, and they get straight twos. This means judge tampering is eliminated right there. Yeah. Because if one judge hates you, or one judge is blackmailed by you, like, I'll tell your wife I fucked you if you don't, what do you call it, make me first, then that he can make her first, and he'll get dropped. Because the only time that it would matter is if two people had her first or three people had her first, in which case the judge tampering is irrelevant because the girl actually deserved to be first. But if you put her first and everyone else puts her fourth, then you and one of the four gets dropped, she gets fourth. Judge tampering is impossible unless you've slept with multiple judges. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. That's the only way that in like you said, you don't know who I don't know. It's not to say that it doesn't happen. I, it just seemed far fetched to me. Well, what's far-fetched is that the Washington Post didn't go out of their way to actually discuss with anyone what the judging process is. No, they didn't talk about that at all. That the judging criteria is set up so well that judge tampering is impossible or virtually impossible. That for the girl to be that hot, to have the ability to manipulate men so efficiently, she would be winning anyway. And if she had enough money to bribe judges then why the fuck is she doing the show? She could just buy a private jet or a yacht or some shit. Why even try to win a pageant by buying your way through it? And of course, it's set up so that some creepy Uncle Fester-like judge is like trying to manipulate these girls into thinking like Harvey Weinstein, that they're going to lose every show for the rest of their life and have no career unless they sleep with that person. And it's like, let's be real. If a girl who's super hot, can have 6 million followers on Instagram, having no contacts, then that means that if you're really that good, you're going to win regardless if people like you or not. Because you can win at your own steam. But yeah. if that the whole concept that my career sucked because they blacklisted me, it's like, if you're really that good, you're going to win no matter what. No one can stop right. you. Like, Kai Green had sex with a cantaloupe. And they didn't. No one wanted to give him any contracts. Didn't stop him from getting stuck in at the Olympia. He's that good. I've like, never heard the Kai Green story before. That's a new one to me. <laughs> no, you didn't know about that. That's supposedly no. why he never won the Olympia is because he had sex with um, fruit for money. Like he would do, like not gay porn because he's having sex with fruit, but like gay dudes would pay him to have sex with fruit. <laughs> and videotape uh, it uh, and then he, that's how he earned a living so he could pay for his tilapia and rice and kai if you're watching this i'm not saying you did it at all i'm saying that this is the rumor and quite frankly i would have sex with fruit if someone was going to pay me and i needed it in order to get to the olympia that if all i had to do to get the olympia is have sex with some fruit that's fruits getting the shit fucked out of it <laughs> oh, smashing man, pumpkins will have a whole new meaning <laughs> and then wonder why bodybuilding's fucked up. <laughs> oh man! Like, yeah, I mean, hide your produce. Todd Lee's coming to town. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh man yeah i mean bodybuilding's always had a reputation for being full of freaks and weirdos i mean that that's for sure uh and I mean, i've been around it for a long time I, I will say this, though, and this is another aspect of it that they didn't uh, cover that kind of upset me is like m- most people aren't on the professional level. Most people are just amateurs at, at the gym Ooh. and 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 most people don't even compete. And it's it's been a positive for my life. And I know so many men that I work with how much, you know, it's it's guys that's pull, I've seen people pulled out of depression. I've seen people, uh, you know. In my in my situation, I was coming off a terrible divorce, and I was just you know not in a good place. And I got myself back to feeling normal, getting my self esteem back. Uh, you know, just the positive influence that that it has on so many people. I, I think they really overlooked that and overshadowed that. And I I hope that doesn't ruin it for a lot of people. <laughs> well, here's like okay, the irony th- about abuse is you never really realize how bad it is. So like the frog in the pot, right? You put a frog in cold water, you turn the heat on, the frog never jumps out, even though it's being cooked alive. So it's like, I remember when you you were telling me how bad your marriage was, I was like, this is a boiling water situation where Paul's been in this relationship for so long, he doesn't realize the water's fucking boiling. Like he would (laughs) never... If he heard one of his friends come to him, he would never be okay with, he would be saying the same shit I'm saying, that this is unacceptable behavior. You've went above and beyond. It's time to cut your losses. I was more colorful, but no one ever sees it that way because they're looking at their future ex-wife with rose colored glasses. It's like, if you're dirt fucking poor living in a house that you're not paying rent on you have one light bulb and you go from room to room to room with a one light bulb you're eating rotting chicken or you're going to the food drive to get your chicken you spend all your money on trend because you can't afford gasoline so you get all your gym partner to pick you up and take you to the gym and you're basically like i need to win this show so that i have some positive momentum so i can get some clients so i can afford to buy enough testosterone to keep myself from falling apart after the show. It's like, that's not drug addiction. Like they're saying like a hamster will inject them the brain with testosterone because of the euphoria it gets. It's like, no, no, no. The hamster wheel you're trapped on is you need to maintain your physique in order to make the money to maintain your physique because that's your source of income. It's a job. And so you don't realize how bad your life really is in And so you like looking back and be like, wow, that was the poorest I've ever heard of anybody. Like I'm, I let myself get that fucking poor. So I never had to take my foot off the gas of bodybuilding and focus on income or fuck having a family or having any type of emotional health. It's just, I need to focus on being the best bodybuilder I can be. And that to me is a terrible thing about any type of goal acquisition. 99% of people are going to quit. For example, like in the Navy SEALs, right? There's these dudes who are pretending they're not injured. They're running around with stress fractures in their tibias, in their tarsals of their foot, their talus, that they've got all types of injuries that they're covering up because if they report that they're injured, they have to quit Hell Week or whatever, the end of buds is, and they have to restart buds again later. So they just train with these injuries on top of it. And that's because the goal is worth it to them to drive through the most dark period. And that is something that you come out of knowing about yourself that no matter what, if I sink my fangs into something, no matter how much it struggles, I don't ever lose my grip with my fangs. Like my jaw is locked down on this goal. And nothing's getting me free short of a bullet into the skull. And that's something that bodybuilding teaches people about themselves that this article will never get. And then it's, they're like so hyper-focused on using extremely safe drugs in extremely low doses when compared to the way the doctors prescribe them to sick people. We're talking about hyper-healthy people using tiny amounts of healthy drugs to accomplish that health maintenance while they're pushing themselves to the limit 
and it's not correlating the amount of deaths that occur to the general population of athletes. They didn't mention that in the 2021, athlete deaths were up 70-fold in all sports relative to 2019. I mean, what did I, what did I see? I mean, I I think like you talk about the let's, let's talk about the NFL. I I I think I don't remember the study. I think the NFL buried it, tried to bury it, but there it was it was pretty controversial a few years ago that came out where it showed like the average lineman only lives to be in their late forties, like the average lifespan. So I mean, you know, just from beating the shit out out of themselves. But this is what these guys are gladiators, man. It's what they want to do. I mean, they they'd rather die young than than. I don't know. It, it's it's their path to f- fulfillment, and everybody has their path to fulfillment. I and you hit the nail on the head, man. It, you have to journey through a dark place to come out on top. I mean, that's that's the hero's journey. It's the classic hero's. journey. That's what Star Wars is about, man. Going going through the through the dark place to get to the to the light, and I don't know. It it's I've seen so many people affected positively. Like if you can take that transfer it to business or any other goal in your life you you can accomplish anything and they get so focused on people taking this drug or that drug they, they lose sight of what the bigger thing is with it so correlation all right so people are familiar with medical school being the hardest form of education it's harder to become a medical doctor than it is to become anything else in the world except for maybe a a, a fighter pilot or an astronaut right they don't acknowledge the fact that medical students use amphetamines to study and they use sleeping pills to sleep, just like fighter pilots use amphetamines to stay awake on missions and use sleeping pills to go to sleep after missions, red light, green light pills. And we know that astronauts have to be on a fuck ton of drugs just to survive being on space in a zero G and gravity environment. They probably yep. take steroids too. Otherwise, they'd lose all their muscle mass and bone mass because there's no gravity for them to support their body weight against. When they came back to Earth, they'd be like Gumby. And so in and of itself, the amount of drug use would probably be equal between, I shouldn't say the amount of drug use, the consequences from said drug use is probably the same for doctors as it would be for bodybuilders. The average medical doctor's lifespan, I think it was 55 at one point, which is lower than the average bodybuilders. That yeah. of the 1970s bodybuilders, most of them are still alive. The handful that died, died of their normal lifespan ages. You know, Franco Colombo drowned in the ocean in his 80s or in his 70s. So he was so healthy, he's able to go for swims in the ocean. It wasn't arbitrary. He didn't fall off a fucking boat. He just walks out of his house, goes into the ocean, starts swimming, and died one day out of hundreds, if not thousands of times, he swam in the ocean as a senior citizen. So the functional, the vitality, the quality of life, the functional ability of a 50 or 60-year-old retired bodybuilder is higher than that of the man of the general population. likely his lifespan is as well. And so is his cardiovascular and cerebral functioning. So if hypothetically the heart is taking damage from steroids, it's not taking as much damage as the normal atrophy rate of an individual who doesn't train, doesn't eat right, and takes recreational drugs like alcohol, cocaine, nicotine, or any of the other things that doctors prescribe people that are horrible for you, but you think are good for you because it's coming from a doctor. Yeah. I don't know if you saw it or not, man. And this is the first thing that came to my mind. It, there was a, I think it was the, uh, uh, oh God, American Journal of Medicine. Yeah, American Journal of Medicine um, I had published that st- uh, study. It was like three or four weeks ago. I saw it, ca- it came out where alcohol related illnesses and causes are now the number one um cause of death for anybody under 50 you don't you don't hear people talking about that i believe it and it's because let's say you're the washington post all right and you're owned by amazon and you're posting an article that's against the alcohol industry how many alcohol related although not alcohol alcohol related 
things are sold on Amazon? How much business do you stand to lose by alienating that industry? Does steroids get sold on Amazon? No. Uh-huh. Do it needles get sold on Amazon? Yes. Does workout equipment get sold on Amazon? Yes. But are, are the workout equipment used exclusively by bodybuilders? No. So they stand very little money to lose by targeting bodybuilders. They stand a lot of money to lose by targeting alcoholics. Like if, for instance, how many bottle openers are sold a day on Amazon? How many can, you know, uh, wine bottle corkscrews are sold a day? How many wine glasses are sold a day on Amazon? I'm sure any one of those things outsells the entire fitness industry. That alcohol paraphernalia is probably much bigger cash cow for Amazon than it is the entire fitness industry. Yeah, I mean, it's it's all about money, man. It, it, it really is. It just, I don't know, this this whole thing kind of upset me. Um, I, I just, because I, I know so many people that have had, a, where bodybuilding's had a positive <laughs> influence on their life. And so many people, I, I literally, I know people that probably would have committed suicide if it wasn't for even recreational bodybuilding. Uh, like getting into the gym and just getting into shape and got, I've, I've, I personally have worked with people and helped friends out of the gutter, um, you know, by getting them in shape and helping them actualize themselves. So I don't know. It just, it just really upset me that they painted it in this light. I think it's mostly an opportunity for this Desmond Butler to make a name for himself because he is the son of, George Butler, who did Pumping Iron. So much so that they even did an article about that. This is his opportunity to make it big into journalism and get his Pulitzer by dragging this, using his dad's name and the sport that made his dad famous. And in theory, he's going to say that my dad made that sport famous, whatever. You know, it, that may be so or vice versa. No one knows who George Butler is, and everyone knows what bodybuilding is. So, isn't it? And everyone knows who Arnold Schwarzenegger is. So, really, it's Arnold was going to be discovered eventually. Yeah. And it's just George Butler happened to be the one who did it. And Arnold brought bodybuilding into the public. George Butler was that vehicle. But if it wasn't George Butler, it would have been the next um, person. So this Desmond Butler is going to make a name for himself off of the corpse of bodybuilding, because if he was really that good of a journalist, he would have already been famous for something else. Yeah. It just makes me sad because I I love the sport and I I just, I I think it does incredible things for a lot of people. And yes, there are some shitheads in it. (laughs) Just like with anything, man, they're, they're, there, there, there are going to be some shitheads in any any industry. There's some people, you know, a couple bad eggs ruin the whole fucking thing for everybody. And yeah, there are so, a few people that do stupid shit. You know, we all we all know those people. Uh, but there, it's it's really the exception, not the rule. I think that the individuals who extorted women, well, I think it's just one guy. But if there's more than one, I think that people who extorted women sexually under the grounds that they could benefit them on stage should be forbidden from ever attending bodybuilding shows and should be um, prosecuted. And if there's enough evidence to convict them, they should probably go to jail for what they did. But if you don't have a case, if you have no evidence, if it's just an angry person, what they typically do is they don't go to the authorities, they go to the press. And they try to try you in the court of public opinion when you're guilty before innocent because they don't have the evidence to take you to court. Do I think that some creepy judge extorted a woman one time or one creepy judge extorted a handful of women 15 years ago? Maybe. But that doesn't mean that the IFBB is responsible for what he did. And so this is where I'm not against women. I'm not pro molestation. I'm not pro sexual assault. I'm pro IFBB. And I basically am going to assume whatever position I have to to protect the organization that I'm part of and close ranks 
against allegations and say, if this happened, you have to prove it. Yeah, I mean, I I, I, it's, I go back to it again. I, I just have, maybe it happened. I don't know. I mean, we, we don't know. Only only that guy knows and only those women know. Um, and if, if it did, it's reprehensible. And like you said, he should be prosecuted and kicked out of the IFBB. But it's not. It's If found guilty. Yeah, if found guilty. But it's not representative of the whole organization. I, I don't know. But it, it's, I, I know plenty of women that compete and love love with the IFBB and um, love bodybuilding. I, I, I work with them. I talk to them. I, I, I have not heard anybody say anything negative. Yeah, and if all this time I would have heard something. I want to talk about this liver king bullshit. <laughs> I'm still, still top of mind. I, I, uh, I have mixed feelings about it. I, I told people I wasn't going to talk about it anymore, but then I don't know. I feel like it deserves one, one more round of, of, of talking. I personally, I don't give a fuck if the guy takes gear or whatever. It, it don't, it doesn't make a fuck to me. I think people. I got a lot, man, dude. I posted a thing up about him, and I lost fifteen hundred followers on Instagram in one day. Why? I got a lot of angry people, man. A lot of people what? love that. Love that dude. I don't know. I had a bunch of guys reach out to me that were super angry, got really upset. Um, and it was I. I it's not that I care that he takes stuff. I, I really don't care that he takes stuff. It's that he built this whole persona. It was premeditated. It was it, talk about shit bags. Um, somebody who premeditated premeditated a, a <laughs> persona to sell people supplements and a lifestyle. That was untrue to defraud them of their money. That's what I was angry about. As bad as that is, it's nowhere near as bad as telling a girl, if you don't sleep with me, I'm never going to let you win a show again. Regardless <laughs> of the guy has to. So I want people out there who think I, I'm like not on women's side. I'm more on your side than you think. I As bad as the Liver King is, he's nowhere near as bad as the coach who hurts girls or the judge who takes advantage of his position of power to extort women or any creepy dude who extorts women for sex. They're always worse than even someone like the liver King who pushes a lifestyle and a persona and tells men, if you don't walk around with your shirt off, if you don't sun your balls, if you, if you wear shoes, you're subprimal. Basically I'm living this lifestyle and the lifestyle, it creates my body. And if you don't live my lifestyle, you're a little beta bitch cunt. And that for you to have any balls or self-esteem, you have to act exactly like me. When it turns out, not only was he using steroids, he was using steroids wrong, which to me <laughs> is more despicable. I can respect an evil person who's clever. I can't stand stupid people especially stupid, evil people. So it's like, if you're at least going to be evil, be clever about it. At least use a good gear cycle. Like anybody could have looked at that cycle and said, you're on a tiny amount of testosterone. You're on GH wrong because it's not working. Rather than continuing to spend 12 grand a month on GH, just use less GH. Since it's not working, use one or two units like a normal person. And... Instead of lying and saying that you're not on steroids, say, I'm on hormone therapy because I'm in my mid-40s. I use the same amount as every other dude gets from their doctor. Since most men over 40 are on some type of HRT, I'm using less than the minimum amount. I don't need to use very much because of my lifestyle which carried me through to this age without having to use anything. I just started HRT at 424, where most men start HRT at 31. So you can minimize your usage and justify your uses and still be honest that like, I got this body through being primal. I maintain this body at my age through being primal and a tiny dose of HRT. That would have been fine that nothing he did was wrong. It was simply lying about being on gear has blown up in his face. No, the part that I, I cracked up about with the liver King that really made me that everybody seemed to miss out on. I went down and broke, broke out the macros on his diet and what he was eating. Dude, he was eating, he was drinking three shakes a day with two ounces of meat with those shakes. And ha he only was eating one solid meal per day. 
And he was mostly living off of protein powder, almond butter, ghee. Um, I mean, super high fat diet. I think I calculated out he was eating something like 300 grams of fat per day. It was it was just a monumentally stupid diet. I don't know what he was doing. Yeah, it's um he was on 112, 115 grams of powder per meal and 112 grams of meat. So instead yeah. of the liver king, he should have been the powder king. He yeah. was on 45 grams of powdered protein, 60 grams of powdered dextrose, 15, 10 grams of powdered creatine. And then he was on four ounces of red meat. So he's actually having more powder per gram than red meat, not even dehydrated meat, like hydrated meat. He He's still having more powder. Yeah. And maple syrup. You forgot that. <laughs> I mean, I don't have a problem with him having eggs and maple syrup and almond butter and ghee. Like, that's all some primal shit. That's literally a paleo diet, right? Except for the ghee. But to tell people they're subprimal because they're eating, you know, vegetable base, what's dextrose? Dextrose is carbohydrates refined from corn. It's corn syrup. When you mix dextrose with water, you get corn syrup. So here he is having corn syrup, which is highly processed vegetable carbohydrates. So he's not a carnivore and he's not paleo. He's an omnivore. Yeah. Just, yeah. That has just a very simplified diet with no green vegetables in it. And it was no all fruit. just bullshit. It was all just bullshit. So he, it was just, just the whole thing was just made up to sell stuff. I have to give it to him. Dude, dude knew how to make money. I mean, I don't know. If, I, he's probably making even more now. I, I, I saw somewhere that he he made a hundred million or grossed a hundred million in revenue this this past year. Right. That's insane. It blows my mind that he's larger than the entire supplement industry all by himself. Yeah, that's wild that he he grossed a hundred million dollars this past year. Now I run a business as you know, that's, you know, people think that he made a hundred million. I mean, if you, if you hold 10 for 10, 15% margin to the bottom line at the end, I mean, that's, that's a good profit profit. So let's, let's just say he, he had a 10% bottom line or margin to bottom line. He still made $10 million. That ain't too shabby. For so, one year. Most people don't make that in a lifetime. No, most people don't make that in a lifetime. So the dude made off of some money. I don't even know anything about his supplements. I, sh I should probably look at them and see what they were. But um, Well, I mean, what are the chances he's the only owner of the company? What's the chances that he's the only formulator? I wouldn't be surprised if he is on a board of directors of a manufacturing plant. And that manufacturing plant has seven or eight of their own labels. And that he basically is just there. And that he is, what he did is they converted him from an inactive board member to being the social media icon that he is. And he endorses the products that are under the label that he's part of. I wouldn't be surprised if out of that $100 million, there's $10 million in profits, and the 10 people on the board each got $1 million. And he got a $1 million for all that. But he had to pay out of pocket nothing for all of the camera work and directing and all that shit. Well, I talked I talked to some people. I got to be careful what I say, but I talked to some people that know the guy. Uh -huh. um, and I got some pretty pretty juicy information. I got to be careful what I say, but it, it was this this was very contrived, very calculated and very it, it was it was all a marketing campaign. I I do know that for sure. Right. It was brilliant. <laughs> I have to give him that. I mean, he manufactured a whole persona that wasn't even real. Can he be brought up on charges? I, he didn't do anything legally wrong, I don't think. I don't think there's anything there legally he did wrong. I mean, I don't... Well, I don't... If, if you're lying in order to create a persona for the purpose of marketing... I mean, like People do okay, it all the time. Let's put it this way. I mean, <laughs> Let Millie Vanilli... They didn't actually sing. They just danced and lip synced while the producer did all the singing. Is it not reasonable that someone who purchased those albums could try to say, have a class action lawsuit where everybody who bought a Melly Vanilla item gets a refund 
because the people that are claimed to be the singers aren't actually singing. I mean, he could be civilly liable. That's for sure. Yeah, um, that's I, what I mean. So I don't. I don't think there was anything people, criminal there. If people are foregoing getting HRT despite having symptoms, so that they can, because they believe the Liver King and they bought his su- supplements, and they're spending let's say three hundred dollars a month on supplements rather than getting HRT from their doctor, and then there's some type of health complication that persists or emotional damage, like they have depression, they have low energy, their wife leaves them because of erectile dysfunction, all because they trusted the liver king and not their doctor. Are they not, it's reasonable they could sue civilly and say, had you not misled me into thinking you were natural, I would not spent money on these products and not done the same thing you actually did, which was get TRT or HRT from my doctor. That if you were my goal, and I intentionally foregoed medical advice to follow your advice when you were lying to me, then you fucked me out of the medical advice I normally would have taken had you never existed. Oh, I'm sure there's some enterprising lawyer out there uh, getting a class action suit together. The, the, the whole thing's wild. I mean, I, I think back to, uh, I mean, you've been around for a while. I used to read the bodybuilding magazines in the 90s and the early 2000s. Everything in those magazines was bullshit. I remember people shucking supplements and everybody, every pro bodybuilder was natural and yada, yada, yada. And it was it was just all Gakic. bullshit. and Gakic. Like you had to buy leucine pills and you had to buy glutamine pills rather than just buying bulk powder and making a shake yourself. I remember me- metrics. I remember those boxes of metrics that were like $100. And the bars. Just- yeah, well, they they had this. Uh, I remember they had this kit you could get, this mask kit you could get. And I remember buying it, and it, it was really at the if if I recall correctly, I'd have to go back through and look at the. It was just some shitty uh, whey concentrate with some dextrose mixed in with it. it. Wasn't anything, and and they were oh my god, they were charging so much money for that for that shit. Yeah. I remember mass gainers that were maltodextrin. It was like casein protein mixed with whey protein concentrate. It was like a ton of maltodextrin. And it was like MCT oil and safflower oil. It's like if you wanted to have the most violent diarrhea of your life, (laughs) then you would just drink fucking 60 grams, no, 180 grams, three heaping scoops of this shit of weight gainer in between every one of your meals it didn't even have like a formula for calculating out your nutritional needs and saying okay you need 3,000 calories and 200 grams of protein per day so this will account for 30 percent use 30 percent of your calories from our formula and spread it out over three meals then make up the other 60 percent with the other three meals 20 percent of your needs per meal because they'd be like, people don't like math. They want it simple. Just have them do three scoops three times a day. They'll <laughs> they'll gain weight. And really, it was way overkill for a normal person. So they would just get explosive diarrhea. Explosive diarrhea or get fat. <laughs> or both. Yeah, both. I, yeah, I remember all that bullshit stuff. The, the best stuff was sold out of the back, <laughs> the back of the magazines. I, I, there was there was some crazy stuff. I remember um, that's where I found Dante Trudell. I, 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 he had this newsletter. Um, I remember. I, I think it was in a magazine. I saw that uh, it was a bo- bodybuilding underground or something like that. He had this newsletter back in the nineties where he actually talked about stuff that people really did. And I found that um, I still have some of them laying around somewhere. I have to see if I can find them. That would be a blast to po- post those up. I uh, appreciate you coming on, Todd. I'm going to put all your contact information in the uh, uh, video description below and a link to your YouTube channel. Guys, if you if you get a chance, go subscribe to Dr. Todd's YouTube. You've been putting up some really good content lately. Uh, uh, Todd used to have a fantastic YouTube channel before uh, the YouTube gods uh, said no. But, cancel culture. Uh, <laughs> but he's back now. He's got some really good content up, and hopefully we'll we'll, we'll keep you going on YouTube dude i appreciate you coming on tonight appreciate you too man good choice of caller today (laughs) thanks 